What's going on guys, Dan Watson, and I wanna to talk to you about this monitor, which is a monitor that has completely changed so much about my life here for the better, but in a couple ways for the worst. However, this monitor is still one of the best screens that you can buy. It is also on a massive sale right now, which is gonna make it way more enticing. Although it's still a very high-end monitor, it is much more budget-friendly. Now that is gonna mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. However, I've learned so much from this process of having it and using it and uh, learning a lot from it. So hopefully that no matter where you are in this spectrum, you can learn a lot about screens and why that even if this particular Particular model isn't the best one for you that this video will still be extremely helpful now I think that monitors can come off a little bit boring uh, for many of us including myself it's just something that I look at it's not really a cool toy that I get to play around with however I spend most of my life looking at this screen right here and in so many ways it means a lot so not only is it giving me an accurate representation hopefully about what my work is representing but it's also kind of an emotional aspect too because if I'm like Liking what I'm seeing from my screen, I'm gonna be more into it versus if it's a crappy monitor and I don't like the way things look, even if it looks amazing in real life, if it looks crappy on my screen, I'm just gonna end up giving up. I'm not gonna be all that into the edit or whatever it is. And I'm not gonna be getting that good color grade, whether for photos or videos. So it is gonna be one of the most important decisions that you can make is picking a monitor. So now on to the monitor, which is the Asus PA32UC. Pro Art series. So this is a mouthful of a name right here, but what won me over is these specs. You're talking a 32 inch 4K display with 100% sRGB, 99.5% Adobe RGB, 95% DCI, and just some unbelievable specs here. So you're talking, uh, we have HDR, and I'm not talking about the fake HDR, which they put on almost every monitor right now. This has over 300 local dimming zones. We're talking a thousand nits max brightness. This is not specs that you'll find on your average monitor right here. And then when it comes to even like USB ports, we have USB-A, we have USB-C, we have Thunderbolt, uh, Thunderbolt 3 in and out, then that output can drive 60 watts to be able to charge like a MacBook Pro 13 inch or something like that from this monitor. And then also we have four HDMI ports. So you can use this thing not just for editing, but also content consumption or gaming or things like that. So plan on plugging in like an Xbox into this or your uh, Chromecast, something like that onto it. Because again, HDR with local dimming zones, it can be really great for watching movies and stuff like that. You also have display port and just, I mean, overall some amazing features right here from a monitor. So that moment was like a take my money please, I want this monitor right away. I mean, how can you beat that? So I got this thing in, I started putting it together. It went together in like 10 seconds. It is one of the easiest monitors to put together. I've had some monitors that were like Ikea furniture putting this thing together. This was the easiest there is. And then just look at it. It's really nice looking, really cool stand on here. Kind of this metallic finish right here. It's got um, a little bit of bezels on the side, but much smaller than you'd see on a lot of other 32 inch 4K monitors. And so overall, it just had the build quality and the looks to go along with a very high end display. So then I went to plug this thing in and that is where the honeymoon phase kind of ended. So all of the ports on this thing are actually right here on the bottom. It's extremely difficult to get to them under here. There's no way, there's actually none on the side or anything like that. And uh, the cable management to this is just about non-existent as you can see here. There's nowhere to put all this. So all of a sudden my nice pretty monitor is looking a little bit ugly here. And getting in to some of these USB ports is so difficult that you would never plug in like a thumb drive or something like this to this. It's nice always to have a couple on the back and the side. So, but I got everything plugged in and then I went to turn it on and I realized that all of the on switches and the joystick and everything like that are off to the side. Now I typically run a dual monitor setup. So I have another monitor here to my right, meaning it was just about impossible to actually reach this thing from the bottom. You can't, so you have to reach it from the side. So I was always scooting over my monitor to be able to access all of these settings and be able to control all of that. And it was just a really annoying experience. Now this is not the only monitor that has a setup like this, but for me and the way that I was doing things and the way that I like to work, it just became a nuisance and some really annoying hardware once it came to using it. 
Now this does not have a hood with it. So if you're someone who uses one of those, you're a little out of luck. I personally don't, so it wasn't a big deal for me. Uh, so uh, about that amazing picture quality, right? So I go and turn this thing on. I mean, you've got 384 zones, I believe it is, of local dimming on this thing with full HDR and a thousand minute brightness. So you're expecting amazing things. So all of that brightness, because I like to work with a bright monitor, I know it's not great for your eyes, but I like to do it. So all of that amazing stuff, and I go to set this thing up, it is color calibrated from the factory. So I go to turn this thing on and set it up, and that's when these modes just really hit home as being horrible. So if you go into some of these modes, in the sRGB, for example, it is extremely dark. Uh, I've got this place pretty dark, so I don't know how to look on camera, but it is actually, I believe it's like 160 nits in this, and you cannot change the brightness at all in this mode. So when you go to this, all of your profiles are actually canceled out and grayed out. You cannot control this at all. So here is the mode that I use the most and I probably would recommend using the most often unless you have a complete Adobe RGB workflow or DCI or something like that. But most of my stuff is going to the web. So I just use an sRGB. It's great to have just kind of a standard out of the box. Uh, again, you're gonna want to use a color calibrator eventually on those, but it's nice to just have something that you know is going to be close, especially when you first get this thing going. And it was pretty much unusable for me unless you're in an extremely dark environment or like to work with a very dark screen, then you might be able to pull it off. Also, this, stream, this screen is extremely sharpened, over sharpened, and not in a good way, just like over sharpened modes. You can control that and turn it down to zero, but I found that even with this thing, where is it? So even with the sharpness turned down to zero, it's getting a lot more detail on my monitor and screen than I'm able to observe in a print and in ways that are just not good. So obviously the next step is to get things calibrated. So that's when I pulled out my data color Spider X and went to this monitor to improve the color accuracy. It's a really cool pro art calibrator on here and that allows you to actually set a lot of these. You can actually store things physically into the monitor, your profile. So it can be really good for switching between two. You have two user controlled functions. Now there's no hardware or easy to access hardware switch to do that. I, I wish there was something like here or on the base or something like that where I could quickly uh, configure those or I don't know, a, hot, a little puck that, that has some buttons on it. That would be really great remote. Um, I don't have that. So it's not the easiest for switching between different profiles, which I do like. I like one profile for when I'm editing for color accuracy and the other for when I'm editing or just uh, browsing the web and things like that. And I want things to look good for my eyes the way that I like to see it. Usually that's higher brightness and more contrast. But then for color editing, I want things a little bit different. So there's no easy way to do that. However, you can go into this. Um, again, their brightness is 150. And that's very low for the brightness for the way that I like to do things. You can go to advanced, start to customize that. You can bring it all the way up to 300. Um, however, when you start to do that and you go into your next and you go into your calibrator type, that is when it gives you three options. Your data color spider five, your x right i1, and your x right i1 Pro. Now, if you get the European version of this monitor, it includes one of these models. However, the US one does not. And my Spider X is not one of the models, which means that I can't use this, and I have to go back to Data Color Spider System. So if you have one of these or are picking up one of these models, then this becomes a huge feature and one that is really nice to have for me. It's just about unusable right now, at least until they update this to support a couple other versions of these color correctors right here. However, I was able to run this, get the monitor looking the way that I want. And now I am getting an amazing picture, uh, just not out of the box, not easily. And I have to go through a couple things to get it. But now I am able to use this the way that I want. I am getting that HDR. I am getting a quality screen and hardware that looks really nice. I am still a bit annoyed at this color management system. It is also not great if you have a monitor on this right side. 
but those are things you can probably get over and enjoy some of the higher quality displays out there with really bright full HDR out there. Now, even after color calibrating this the way that I like, I do find that's just a little bit magenta. Now, if you go to their website and look at their monitor specs, they talk a lot about how low blue light that this monitor has, which is better for your eyes in most cases. And then in fact, it actually has a lot of blue light filters. So there's actually five levels of blue light filters you can add in addition to this. Now I have mine turned down to zero and I still find that there's just a little bit of a magenta shift on it. You notice it a lot when looking at white backgrounds, so like google.com. Again, it's probably better for your eyes. I'm wondering if that is the reason why it is like that, but compared to most of my other displays, it's difficult to get this to match up because it never quite looks white or that little blue tint of white that I'm used to from a monitor. Now, technically this is not true 10-bit, it is 8-bit with FRC. Uh, that's not an issue for me. I find the implementation is very good. Usually I'm not even working in a full 10-bit timeline, but uh, if you are, especially now that Adobe updated a lot of their graphics cards to be able to support 10-bit, it is kind of here in that, in that simulation. And I found that it actually did a fine job with that. So if you're someone who wants to stay 10-bit, I'd still find this monitor is gonna be great. So here I am months later. I love the look and the feel for this. The cable management, again, is really annoying to me. I wish it was better. And controlling this monitor is a big pain, especially if you have another monitor stacked on the right side. So let me know in the comments if you're someone who likes to use these dual monitor setups. I think when you go with 32 inches, people expect you to go with a single monitor. For video editing, I find it's still better to have a second display because I like to have all of my timelines lines on this and my controls and then my viewing screen or my monitor on a separate monitor or something that is uncluttered. Now, if you don't need true HDR, also check out BenQ's uh, PD3220U. I wish these guys would come up with better names for this. That is a similar monitor. 4K, 32 inches, and it gives you a lot of the same specs, including HDR, but the max brightness on that is 300 nits. So if you're someone who's doing a lot of video editing with HDR or video consumption with HDR, this monitor is gonna give you much better results with all the local dimming and max brightness of 1,000 nits. But if you're just doing photorealistic editing and you want good color accuracy, that BenQ might be another option to you. It keeps the controls easier to reach down the bottom if you're a dual monitor setup like me. And then it also has some USB ports on the side. So let me know what you guys think of this monitor. This was the higher end monitors that I've used. So I had a lot of high expectations for it. Some were met, some were not. Let me know what you guys think of this or how you rock your monitors right here. Uh, please like and subscribe. Stay tuned. There's a new video coming up really soon.